When most people hear the name Bob Lazar, the first thing they usually think of is UFOs, aliens, or Area 51. And that's because back in the 1990s, Mr. Lazar went public claiming to have worked at the top secret government facility at Groom Lake, Nevada, reverse engineering what he claims were flying saucers or disc-shaped craft that allegedly defy gravity itself. Since then, Bob Lazar has reluctantly given numerous interviews on the subject of advanced propulsion technology, and while he seems to prefer maintaining his privacy, his testimony has played a large part in the United States government finally admitting that Area 51 indeed does exist, and not just as a Hollywood movie. After decades of secrecy and conspiracy theories, the U.S. government has finally confirmed the existence of Area 51. The site of much speculation was officially acknowledged in declassified documents and contained the first official references to Area 51. Located 130 kilometers northwest of Las Vegas, the site was developed by the CIA in the 1950s. But the secrecy surrounding the area, also known as Groom Lake, caused a mass of conspiracies over the years, with many centered on the US government, UFOs and aliens. That said, Bob Lazar has been involved in many interesting scientific projects. And this is regardless of how you feel about his claims regarding UFOs or the U.S. government's supposed black ops projects in underground facilities. While the most reported on was his rocket-powered car, that is, a vehicle with an actual rocket attached to it, what I found most interesting was his water-powered car, or vehicle that runs on hydrogen, which powers his Corvette that he modified himself with a range of 400 miles on one tank. How does this sound? A conversion kit that would allow your car to run on clean, plentiful hydrogen. It's in the works in New Mexico, and the name of the guy who's building it may ring a bell. He's Bob Lazar, and 16 years ago, he told our George Knapp about Area 51 and said scientists there were studying UFOs. He dropped out of sight, but George caught up with him. As a teenager, Bob Lazar built a jet-powered bicycle, later a jet Honda, then a jet dragster. These days, he's focused on a different propulsion system. Every vehicle we have here is powered by hydrogen. At his new home in rural New Mexico, Lazar has been working on a conversion kit that will turn any car into a hydrogen hybrid. His two vehicles have already been converted and can travel up to 450 miles on hydrogen gas, then switch automatically back to gasoline. Lazar wants to take it a step further. Every major car manufacturer is working on a hydrogen system. The only difference is that they want to sell you a new hydrogen car and they want to sell you hydrogen gas at hydrogen gas stations. Basically what we're doing is making a conversion kit you can use in your own car and instead of buying hydrogen from somebody else, you make it. He makes hydrogen using water and a solar power generator, but again with a Lazar twist. But it's the only particle accelerator on the block, I'll guarantee it. The small lab behind his home has a 30-foot long particle accelerator he built from scratch. He uses it to produce metal hydrides, which absorb hydrogen gas like a sponge and make it much safer to use as a fuel. Now you can do that with ordinary metal hydrides, but we found a way to kind of actually manipulate the atomic structure to change things and it worked out fantastically. Almost sounds like you're a real scientist. <laughs> That's what they tell me. It's an inside joke based on the ridicule Lazar has faced ever since he went public in 1989 with his claims that he worked on flying saucers in the Nevada desert. The military refused to answer any questions about Lazar or his claims, nor could we verify much of anything about his life. Lazar told us he previously worked at Los Alamos National Lab. The lab repeatedly denied it, even after we found Lazar's name in the lab's own phone book. By no means does he dwell on being proven right. He and his wife have left the UFO crowd far behind and could care less, they say. Lazar stands by his original story, but... I certainly can't say I would do it again. I would probably keep, probably keep my mouth shut this time. Right. Earlier this year, British scientists say they demonstrated an anti-gravity system that appears to be based on the theories revealed years ago by Lazar. It sounds almost too good to be true. So how does one generate explosive power 
an equivalent to that of gas fuel from just water. The trick is to separate the hydrogen out of the water molecule, or H2O, and the result after the combustion is simply water vapor with zero pollution in the atmosphere. The best part is that the car manufacturers would not need to build entire new engine designs, but the millions of automobiles on the road today could simply be converted to run on this new fuel system. To help illustrate how this works, here's a brief demonstration by Bob Lazar on using the process called water electrolysis, in which both the hydrogen and oxygen molecules separate into individual gases. This is a Hoffman apparatus. And it's used to produce hydrogen and oxygen from water. For fun, just because it's cool. Well, if you just have a use for hydrogen and oxygen or for demonstration purposes, it works just perfect. All you gotta do is fill it with water. That's just regular water, right? Well, actually water with a little citric acid, potassium hydroxide, anything like that. The more conductive you make the water, the faster hydrogen will come out. And each one of these sides is supposed to be hydrogen and oxygen? Right, one will be Hydrogen will bubble up out of one, and oxygen will bubble up out of the other. Remember, water is H2O. Right. So when we break the bond of water apart, we'll get twice as much hydrogen gas as we do oxygen. Oh, so what happens to the water? It just goes away. Right. It gets converted so, into... So each one of these tubes, the water just goes down, but what's left is the gas? Right. And there'll be more on this side? Yes. And that's the hydrogen side. Exactly. And that's the negative. Oh, so it matters which way you hook these up. So you got to hook up positive to what is... The positive is well, going to make... The... Positive will make the oxygen. And oh. the negative will make oh, no way. the hydrogen. Okay. So we've just connected it there. Right. And just by turning it on, you can see bubbles start pouring up out of there. It's seven up. <laughs> kind of. So those bubbles are, well, they're not the same. So these are hydrogen bubbles and those are oxygen, oxygen bubbles. bubbles. Right. And there's, this is whiter. There's more of them. Right. I'll, you can see it's really. Why is there more? Oh, H2. Two. Two. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. There's twice as much. Hey, that actually makes sense. So I'll close it off so it saves, right. seals the gas in, and right. then you'll see it'll start filling up. Oh, we could, we don't have to go away overnight if this will do it while we're watching? Yeah, it'll be relatively quick. And what we'll do mm -hmm. is take a little sample of the hydrogen gas mm -hmm. and light it. Right. And you can see. That what just, are, I mean, what are these? You just have electrical current going to a, a piece, it's a of, piece foil. of Well, it's a piece of platinum foil. And the reason you need platinum in there is because that's, it's very corrosive to a metal for electrolysis to occur. I mean, it's really ripping mm -hmm. the atoms of the metal apart, but mm -hmm. Platinum is highly resistant to corrosion. Mm -hmm. Now this is a slow method. Right. And, you know, it, it consumes a fair amount of electricity. Now mm -hmm. if the electricity is being produced from solar panels or a mm -hmm. wind generator, it doesn't cost you anything, so who cares? But still, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours to refill mm -hmm. a vehicle. You want something that can produce hydrogen at a fairly quick rate. So let's go ahead and extract some of this. Okay. Look at that. Wow. So there's power of hydrogen. You see, just from water, something exploded. So this is the same thing that was inside the lab. Yeah, that was a small tabletop model. This is a large industrial version, essentially, uh, which connects right to the water main. Right. And produces a much higher volume. The water hydrogen. main. You're the water garden line. hose. Right, yeah, garden hose. You can plumb it in like you connect your, you know, dishwasher or just connect to a garden hose. Right. And um, it's powered by uh, either a solar array, solar panels, mm -hmm. which convert sun into electricity, mm -hmm. or uh, a wind turbine takes the wind, converts it to electricity, or any other way. But the idea is just to use complete green energy. Ideally, I like to run this one on solar. New Mexico gets a lot of sunlight. So mm -hmm. that's really all there is to it. You connect it to a water line, plug it into your solar panel, and open the water line. You right. know, it starts producing hydrogen, and 
when it has a sufficient quantity uh -huh. in there, you let the hydrogen out and you just leave it plugged into your car overnight. Now, this is the same as those other two tubes, right? Right. Hydrogen and oxygen. Or right. Whichever one is. And the oxygen we have no use for, so we just vent off into the air. And the hydrogen. Well, it's very nice of you. I'm sure the earth would be proud. Well, it could use all <laughs> the oxygen it can get. So right. the uh, hydrogen right. using uh, the water pressure is compressed right. into the hydride tanks. The water pressure, like a syringe, it pushes it right into the tank. Exactly. Well, there's the standard gasoline fill, but also there's a hydrogen in it, which you just click on, leave it on overnight, and as the generator makes hydrogen, it compresses it in there at a nice slow rate, and the tanks become full over a period of about eight hours or so. Why can't everybody do this? I mean, gas is you know, going on five dollars a gallon. Right. It's oh. terrible. The whole country's falling apart. We're you know killing people all over the world for oil, and and this you're driving a car on this, right. and you can do it, and you can convert any other car. Yeah, unless I'm sure there are cars that have some technical right. problems, but yeah, essentially well, any car can be converted. The whole problem to it is the material in the hydride, the hydride itself. Right. One of the main components of it is classified as a weapon material, and it can only be used in thermonuclear weapons. And because, even though it's not a dangerous right. material, explosive, or anything by itself, right. just because it's used within those nuclear weapons right. that are obviously secret and the components thereof, but um, because it's used in those, it can't be used for any other civilian purposes. So, you can't even purchase the material. No. Which is why we had to make it. You made it? Yeah, we made it. If we had just a fraction of what the oil companies are, are wallowing <laughs> in right the, now. we had the budget of one day in Iraq, this entire system would be available to everybody. Bob Lazar is not the only independent inventor who has created a working prototype of a car that essentially runs on water, but he is one of the few that are still alive probably because of his high public profile. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. Please consider reading my published work on Amazon. Thank you for those who support me on Patreon. There should be a link below. Kindly share these videos. Please hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell for updates. Don't forget to leave me your thoughts in the comment section. Have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you again soon.